everyone. Marcus here from the Ashton Fly Shop. And today we're gonna to be tying the Klamath Skater in black. Last week we did the tan one. We'll just show you the black one this week. Um, same processes, just different color. Um, some people really think that when the sun is off the water, um, or for any low light conditions, that skating a black fly um, is a better option to go with tan. So we thought we'd show you that as well. Same, same hook, just the 2051 Daiichi. And we're just gonna start at the top, wrap back here. I'm actually gonna save a little bit more room there than I did the last time. Um, and it's worth noting that as you're proportioning your fly, with a dry fly, if it's gonna be dubbed, just think of how far you're wrapping that thread back. How, how much of a body are you gonna leave yourself? Um, because the less dubbing, the better it's gonna float. So if you leave yourself less room for a body, you're gonna wind up with less dubbing. And I'm actually gonna wrap this tinsel a couple wraps back towards the point of the hook and then over on top of itself. And that just gives us a little hot spot right at the end of the fly for where we can start our dubbing. And we'll just use Ice Dub. My favorite for this and for, for most black flies is just Peacock Black Ice Dubbing. And just wrap it on the thread and really pull it out as much as you can and just, just leave this dubbing really sparse. It'll just help, help this fly stay up on the surface. And start really aggressively wrapping forward getting it as close to the top of the fly as you can. We'll actually use a hair more dubbing because these foam flies, it's worth saying, um, you just do not need very much room at the head compared to some of the other flies you're probably used to tying, like intruders or even traditionals. Uh, a fly like this, where you've got just foam and hair, um, just doesn't take a lot of room to get that done. So we'll tie off that tinsel and we'll just pick really gently, trying not to pull that tinsel. On top of that, we'll take a short section of bronze mallard. I like the little bit longer ones and not even, probably just about a half centimeters worth. Um, we're actually gonna just split that in half and lay them over the fly. And do two on one side of the fly and two similar length. I wouldn't necessarily marry them together, um, but it's nice to have them at a similar length. Pull them apart. And you should just see something similar to that wing shape on top. And on top of that, we'll just do a strand or two. Longer strands than those feathers. This one is meant to really hang off the fly a little bit. And this is pearlescent crinkle flash, um, which if you could only have one color of, of flash for all these flies, pearl would be the one. And I'm gonna double that back on itself and cut it to a similar length. Just trim those up a little bit. And then we're ready to lay down our foam, which is two millimeter thin foam. And we'll cut, cut a little wedge in that foam. And you can leave it long now because you'll, you'll have the, the opportunity to trim it later on. Um, I really like to get that foam right up near the eye. I think the closer to the eye that it is, the better. Trim off the back, and then we'll grab our deer hair, all black dyed deer hair. Grab a, a good little clump. I always grab more than what I'm looking for because as you work out the under hair and everything, all the fuzz and all these hairs, you see how it just pulls out as you grab those tips. You're, you're just left with 
the strands that are first of all the strongest, um, but also just look the best. And we'll put that in our hair stacker. Wiggle everything in there. Come out with nice even tips. You can decide how bulky you want this fly to be by how long you leave this hair. We're gonna do this one just a little bit shorter than last week and I like to switch hands with my scissors. Clip everything beforehand on a fly like this. Um, and I'm gonna do a soft wrap and then a hard wrap. And then I'm gonna pull the foam back do a couple wraps right under that foam and you'll see how it's all pulled back. That's, that's not a problem at all. Come in here, whip finish. You could whip finish straight over those thread wraps, but I like to build a little head at the top of the fly. The reason why that foam's not a problem there is because it'll just bend right back to its normal position. You can kind of push it down if you want. However hard the water you're dealing with, you can trim that foam as necessary to the water that you're fishing. I do like to give, give these little angled edges to it. And then I'm just going to turn the fly upside down grab my hard head and just get a little amount to go right on the bottom of the fly and just help seal it all in there. And you can even kind of touch that deer hair a little bit and touch that foam and it'll keep everything locked into exactly where it's at. So that's Brett's Klamath Skater um, that we get from Aquaflies. Um, that's just a great little summer steelhead fly. For a lot of our rivers, cooling water temperatures, the skating season is, is coming to an end, but just, just south of us on the Klamath, um, they kind of have an extended skating season, which is why we like to fish down there, and just an extended dry line fishery. Um, because the water temps are a little bit higher um, than some other places. So that dry line fishing really right now for the next couple months on the Klamath um, can be pretty productive. So thank you for tuning in. All these materials are available at the Ashton Fly Shop.